Okay, we have Andrew Thomas here. We'll open it up for questions. First one over here on your left. Hey, Andrew. I got a question about Jake Fromm. Uh, when he stepped in there at Notre Dame, how did y'all know he was prepared, or did you only realize that sort of after the game? Uh, and what was he like in those moments? Um, we knew he was prepared in practice. Uh, he approaches practice the same every day. So when he came in against Notre Dame, it was nothing new. Uh, he came to the huddle, dem demanded the plays, you know, and he did what he had to do, you know, for us to win the game. To your right here on the front row. How, uh, how weird, I guess, is it going to be to play Texas A&M this year, looking ahead at, at this year's schedule? And I guess what do you expect from that game from an opponent you guys don't see? Um, it's kind of cool to, I guess, play a, another SEC West team because we always play Auburn every year. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I know they're a pretty good team. I'm excited. To your left over here, Cam. Andrew Rex Castillo from uh, WRBL in Columbus, Georgia. You guys have had so much success in um, these past two seasons, going to the championship, going to the Sugar Bowl. I mean, now is it, what is it going to take to take that final step to, to bring home a national championship? So our motto over the offseason has been do more. And basically that means doing anything and everything you can to uh, – you know, get over the hump to get to the next level, whether that's working out, doing something extra, you know, eating healthier or anything you can do, watching more film just to, you know, get us over the hump. Right down here from. You mentioned Jake Fromm in 2017. Did he make it look easier than it really was to transition to being a starting quarterback after having been a backup? Or because you guys have now been through that, does it make it easier for you all to transition someone else for Jake to get hurt this year? Uh, I think it's, it was, it's all in the preparation, how we practice. Uh, we have a lot of talent on our team. And a lot of guys are pushed every day. So you can never get complacent, which I think makes you, you know, prepare for the game. So if somebody go down, they're, you know, ready to come in. It's, it's the same for, like, how the offensive line. I went down last year. We had another couple of injuries. And, you know, people, they come in and fill the spot, do what they have to do because we practice the same way. Over to your left. AJ Spurn, 90.7 WVUA FM, Tuscaloosa. Andrew, you face some of the toughest defenses in the SEC year after year. Um, have you changed anything in the past, and do you plan on changing anything as an offense and on the offensive line to better combat these uh, strong SEC defenses? Uh, this year, uh, a big thing that we're working on from an offensive standpoint and running the ball is working on more gap scheme plays. We run a lot of zone scheme. That's our bread and butter, but we're trying to develop you know, our gap schemes. To your right against the wall. Michael Brandon from Saturday Down South. Georgia's 12-0 and 0 the last two years in the SEC East. Average margin of victory over 25 points per game. Do you guys feel like you even have competition right now in the East? Uh, we you know, try not to pay too much attention to what happened in the past. Uh, we're just getting prepared for the future. Playing in the SEC, you have to be on your game every week. It doesn't matter who the opponent is, so we can you know, be as successful as we want to be. In the middle right here, Cameron Bank. You just sort of touched on that in your last answer, but does this team, with the way the, the last two games against Alabama have gone, do you guys talk about maybe getting another crack at them? Do you guys ever discuss that amongst yourselves? Uh, not necessarily. We just we want to win a national championship, so whoever is in the way, that's you know, who we want to beat. Right here in the front row. Hey, Andrew, I, I want to ask about do more. Uh, you mentioned the film, you know, all the, all the football stuff. Besides the football thing, practice, things like that, what's your do more? Is it more like reps in the weight room, a higher max? What's your like personal, I'm doing this more this off season? So personally for me, I stay at um, Athens Ridge um, on camp, I mean off campus at, in Athens and we have like a weight room. And the big thing for me, it would be like at 11, 12 o'clock at night and I'll go in there, go on a the treadmill, just run, you know, just making sure I'm staying on top of my cardio. Like we already run a lot, but just doing more, just, you know, just so I can be in the best shape I can. Yeah, definitely. To your left over here. Andrew, what's your uh, earliest memory of playing the piano, and what's your favorite thing to play? Uh, my earliest memory would be probably, I would say, in ninth grade, in high school, we had a, a piano. Sometimes I would go in before uh, band class and practice, and then my favorite song would be All of Me by John Legend. He's right here, second row. You know, Jake Fromm and DeAndre Swift are two of the top Heisman favorites this year. How much personal pride would you take if you were able to kind of block their way to a Heisman trophy? Would you take some pride in that? A lot of pride. Um, I want to see, you know, all the guys I blocked for be successful. If they could accomplish a goal like that, it would be, it would be crazy. To your left over here. Kind of sticking with that same note, do you see this team being more of a run-heavy team because that wide receiver core is so young? 
uh, I think we're, we're going to be balanced. We're going to be not necessarily 50-50, but we're going to be a balanced team. And we lost a lot of receivers, but we have a lot of guys coming in that are very fast, very explosive, and we're going to see what they can do when we get to camp. Okay, to your left over here. Right, it's Clay Webb's from our community. I know he's only been on campus for a few months now, but what are some of your early impressions of him and the kind of player that you think he can be? Uh, Clay, uh, I think wrestling makes him a very good offensive lineman. Like the way he uses his body to block people is ridiculous. Once he, you know, learns how to use his hands and understanding uh, how to make calls at center, because it is difficult playing offensive line as a freshman, but let alone being a center is, is very difficult. But once he, you know, understands the plays and everything, I think he's going to be really good. To your left against the wall, to the right. Uh, how much of your personal success in Georgia's offense overall do you credit to Coach Pittman? Uh, a lot of it. Uh, Coach Pittman is one of the best offensive line coaches in the nation. Uh, he's, he's helped me develop. Um, I give a lot of credit also to my offensive line coach um, in high school that helped me um, you know, understand a lot of technique before I got to Georgia. Okay, over to your left. Georgia seems to do an amazing job of getting freshmen ready to contribute and compete well on the offensive line. You were a part of that equation. Cade Mays is getting ready to go from being a true freshman, freshman All-American into his sophomore year. What's the biggest challenge in terms of getting ready for a true freshman campaign on the offensive line? And then how difficult is it to follow up when the accolades come? I feel like the, the biggest thing as an offensive lineman is just understanding the playbook. Um, we run a pro-style offense, and the way Coach Pittman teaches us is like almost like an NFL lineman. So it's a lot to take in as a young guy. And you see a lot of guys, they play slow because they're trying to figure out which way to go. But once you understand that, that's the biggest thing you need. And then transitioning to the next year, I would say just making sure you don't become complacent. Approach it the same way as you're a freshman coming in trying to earn a spot, and you'll be fine. Right here in the middle, second row. Go ahead. Brian Harris being an experienced player, how much would you compare him to Elijah Holyfield from a year ago? He kind of stepped up and had a uh, big year. Harry in the next spot this year. What have you seen from him this spot? O'Brien has been working very hard. Um, as you guys saw um, in the Texas game, he had a really good game. He's a very talented back, so hopefully this year, you know, he can step up and make some plays for us. Andrew, you, you talked about playing the piano. Uh, along that offensive line, it's such a mix of characters. You've got guys like Ben Cleveland and the guy from New York. Do you have a best Ben Cleveland story? And what's it like with such a mix of big guys? Uh, I would say my best Ben Cleveland story is he has this knife that he carries around that he does everything with. Picks his teeth, uh, toenails, cut stuff, go hunting with, like, it's the same knife. Uh, and then I guess what makes us such a good group is that we all have different backgrounds, but like through Coach Pittman, we all come together and we're all like brothers. It's, you know, we, we have our differences, but we all have the same common goals and we just, you know, love playing next to each other. Any final questions? We have Andrew for a few more minutes. Okay. Talking about those guys in that room, do you feel a different sense of responsibility with a guy like Jamari bringing him along and what do you expect from him this year? Yeah, Jamar is like, you know, my younger brother. We've played together since middle school. So, you know, not just him, but a lot, a lot of younger guys. Just, it's, I feel like it's my responsibility to help them, you know, transition to, you know, playing, playing more, understanding the offense. You know, as some of the older guys leave, they'll, you know, be prepared when we, when we, when we go. Go down here on the second row again. There's been a lot of talk about you being a vocal leader. Does that extend beyond just offensive line and experienced wide receivers? Do you feel the responsibility to also say, hey, yeah, I think being a leader, uh, you have to hold everybody accountable. And then, we, like I talked about, we went to a leadership program um, earlier in the, in the year and just understand that all of us have to hold each other accountable. So if I see somebody in the other position, I can call them out and the same vice versa for, for me. If I'm not, you know, holding up my end of the bargain, then they can, you know, approach me. It's not just based on my position group. We have anything else? Thank you very much, Andrew, for your Thank time. You. Good luck this year.